Ugh, boy. Going to bed at four in the morning? Not a good idea. Hey everybody, Reese from StudyNova.com. Today we're going to be talking about something that's probably rarely spoken about. It's probably less spoken about than the deadlines topic that I spoke about in my last video, and that is to do with, as you can see in the title below, spoon feeding. The inspiration for this little tip video comes from the fact that when I went back to Dubai this past winter to speak to some of my teachers, a lot of them kept bringing up the exact same thing, which was that a lot of students currently doing IB, or at least those younger than me, have a tendency to really not think outside the box or think for themselves. A lot of my teachers, my previous teachers, were essentially complaining about the fact that my graduation year or my class of 2016 from that high school was probably the best at critical thinking and doing things on their own, whereas the generations following my class of 2016 are not so capable at doing things on their own. So that's why I'm making this video today. I'm going to be talking about spoon feeding and why you really need to start taking the initiative when it comes to learning on your own. I went to a British curriculum school. They do the British curriculum up until IGCSE in year 11 and then they change in year 12 and year 13 to the IB program. So if you're a student and you're either doing IGCSE or you have done IGCSE and you've moved into IB, you will notice a very stark difference. In GCSE, IGCSE, whatever you want to call it, you're just given the materials. You're given what you need to study. You're given the guidelines of how to answer questions and you're just given the past papers to study. Everything's just handed to you. In IB, that changes. Things are not just handed to you on a silver platter and teachers don't hold your hands every step of the way through your IAs, your FOAs, your IOCs, the extended essay. A lot of it is done on your own. For example, if you were doing a science-based extended essay, you need to create a project. You need to gather primary data. I know this because I did a physics extended essay and I had to create a very lackluster wind tunnel and create a little balsa wood glider. But the point of me bringing that up is if you're an IGCSC student and you're coming out of IGCSC into IB, that looks and sounds intimidating. Oh no, I have to do this stuff on my own? I don't know where to start. And that is at the core of why a lot of my teachers, at least in Dubai, were complaining to me and what inspired me to make this video, as I said before. You guys need to realize that when you get to IB, the teachers really let go of your hand. They don't guide you and mollycoddle you and provide everything on a silver platter to you when you're trying to learn. A lot of it, you need to take the self-initiative. If you're in class and there's a question you don't understand or there's an assignment, the worst thing that you can do is ask your teacher, sir, what do I do? Or what do I do now? Or miss, I don't know how to start. That, Those questions are potentially the worst type of questions you could ask any teacher if you're an IB. So those aren't very smart questions to be asking. What would be more sensible is if you're really trying to challenge the teacher with your question and challenge your own thinking. So for example, if you're reading through an English text and you're thinking, wow, all the symbolism and these ominous tones, what do they mean? Then you can go up to the teacher and say, look, miss, I've taken a look through this text by Edgar Allan Poe and I can see the ominous tones he's using, but I'm not sure what he's trying to allude to. I've read through his past and his history, but I'm not sure what he's trying to allude to when he talks about the Black Raven. Let's just say it's a hypothetical example of a poem. Now that's a more intelligent question to ask and it invokes a sense of critical thinking both in yourself and the teacher. It's a lot more effective than asking, sir, I don't know what to do or miss, what does this mean? What does this sentence mean? That is dumbing down a lot of what you're supposed to be doing yourself and it makes teachers demotivated and it frustrates them more than anything because they're IB students that they're dealing with and they don't want to have to mollycoddle you the whole way through IB. It's a two-year program, guys. A lot of IB is focused on critical, independent thinking where a lot of the work that you do, as far as CAS, for example, Extended Essay and TOK, is self-initiated. You do things and you think of things on your own and you're not supposed to draw inspiration or answers out of your teacher. So that's what I want to be telling you today in this video. If you're doing IB or you're starting IB, the mentality that you should be taking forward over from whatever curriculum you were doing before into IB is that you need to start asking smart questions and you need to initiate your own types of thought processes 
and then go to your teachers for guidance and inspiration to build on your ideas. You shouldn't be going to them to ask where to start or what ideas they should be pursuing because you have none of your own. You should already have your own ideas with an IA or with an FOA and you need to go to the teacher for guidance and clarity regarding whatever it is that you plan to do assignments wise. Studying wise, you need to go to the teacher and ask them smarter questions, which is, sir, how does fiscal policy and economics affect you know, consumers in society. I mean, aside from tax raises, what else could potentially happen? So those are thought provoking questions that a teacher enjoys answering to a student because it makes them really think and it indicates to them that you're willing to learn and you're very curious about what you're learning in IB. So the main takeaways of today's video is try to ask smarter questions and then do things on your own. You're in IB now. In the matter of two years, you're going to be out of school and you're going to be in university and there's going to be no one holding your hand. So you need to really start thinking more independently as you move into IB and start things on your own because there's going to be a lot of coursework and assignments that you need to do on your own. And the teachers you have are going to be very limited in the support that they're allowed or willing to give you because a lot of this has to be done on your own. So I hope you found this tip video useful. Um, hopefully it doesn't scare you too much. A lot of this is just going to develop with time. You're going to get better at thinking for yourself and developing your own ideas. But it's baby steps. Everyone has to start somewhere. And if for you guys going into IB right now, this is kind of just a starting point. But I want you guys to have the right mentality when you go into IB and you start this whole two-year process of stress and sleep deprivation and procrastination. And speaking of which, if you haven't watched those videos on how to mitigate those circumstances, I'll link them in the description below. But for now, I'm Reese from StudyNova.com, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.